Alright guys, let's uh, get started. Object-oriented Java, object-oriented Java. What is even the point of naming it twice? I do not know. Um, why don't we, you know, why don't we change it a little bit? But when there's only four sections with four different categories, you really don't have many things you can name it. But yeah, that's a separate topic altogether. Check out the code and editor. It incorporates classes, objects, and methods. After this lesson, you'll be able to read and write programs that use object-oriented programming using the object-oriented programming model. So let's uh, let's go over their example real quick before we see what we're going to be making here. So it kind of makes sense. So in the last, we're we're working with this class called Mouse. It's going to extend from the Rodentia.java cl uh, class here. So, in here, our mouse class takes in a parameter that's a string name. So, so here's our, and this is our constructor. This is basically saying this is how things get made. When we're making a mouse, this is what helps us make it. And then we have custom functions for our mouse. Uh, eat here, you know, name plus eat some cheese. Or this isn't actually for the, for the mouse itself, but we'll be able to do that. Or it is, rather. Um... So, oh my god, these cats driving me nuts right now. All right, so then we have public void solve maze. And this is takes in an integer with minutes. And then when we call it, uh, it's going to print out the name and the minutes. And then here's our main method. So the only reason we're going to be able to see this code run is because in our main method, we created a mouse called Ratley. We set it equal to a new mouse. And uh, his name parameter is Ratley, and then he's going to eat. So Ratley's going to eat some cheese. Then he's going to solve the maze in three minutes. And Ratley dot order. What is order? Well, let's see what that is. Oh, so order is a method in here called. So that's why we're able to call the Rodentia class method. It's because it mouse inherits from Rodentia. Rodentia. I think that's how you say it. So in the code editor, create a dog class. So we're going to say class and then we're just going to go ahead and name it dog. Um, let's run it. Good to go. Add a class constructor called the dog to class. So um, we need to set it public so we can create it. And dog and then there's that. Cool. So this is our constructor. We're not really doing too much, but these we're just kind of setting it up. And eventually when you use... I told you these cats are going crazy. Eventually when you use um, like an IDE, like Eclipse is probably the one you'll use m most likely in Java. What uh, you'll end up actually doing is just clicking source and you'll click generate getters and setters, generate um, constructor, and you'll select what you need. And that'll be much quicker and easier. But it's important to know it right now. So create an int instance called uh, age. So we'll say int age. We're not setting it to anything. So we're just going to end it right there. Cool. Um, add int parameter called dog's age. So in our constructor here, we're going to say int. We need to say the type. So that's int. And we're, it's the, the dog's age. And if you don't know, um, it kind of works with camel case for um, parameter names, stuff like that. So um, in this case, we'll say, do they want us to actually declare it? No. And then, uh, yeah, there's two parts. Inside the constructor part, it's at the instance variable age equals dog age. So this age here is going to be equal to our dog's age that age if that makes sense so run that cool cool and there we go you dogs method should have a main method it does so public void main string args this is where again this may seem like a kind of an odd concept it did to me when we first started just think of it as your start button when i hit start this is where it this is where it goes to say look this is where this shit pops off. So like right now, we're not doing anything in it, so nothing's happening. 
All right, so inside the main, use the dog constructor to create dog and assign it to the variable spike. Do we want to give him a name in the inside of main? Use the dog constructor to create dog. Oh, whoops. So we're not actually working with the constructor anymore. The class is already here. So instead, we're going to say dog, uh, dog. So the dog, dog object dog that we're calling dog. That's really bad. Uh, oh, wait. They don't have a name. So we name him Spike. There we go. So that's why I was like, oh, that's really bad for us to do that. So new dog. And we are going to give it the age of, let's say, one. Uh, he's pretty much a puppy. There's no such thing as a dod. And we're not doing it. And even though we're creating this, you can see right here, no code is getting outputted because we're not doing anything with it. We're just creating it. Unless in it, it would have something that would create something and do something from a method or something as such as that. So add a method called bark to the dog class. So here we're in our dog class. And we want to add a... a method that's called public void meaning it's not going to return anything most times and uh, we want it to print out woof so when we call this dot out dot print ln so when we call our bark method all it's going to do is print out woof and when we oh uh do we not want this i think they want us to call it so we'll say spike dot bark I think that's right. Yeah. What's going on here? So, check our brackets. That's all good. That's all good. Public void bark. Run that. That doesn't work. Hmm. Did you create the bark? method place it between the constructor and the main menu that's what I did so let's take this out here Run it. there we go oh my god I wanted to is that really that so um, if you're doing that don't skip steps because they will hold you up on that Who knew? and then we'll print out woof exclamation point semicolon Very cool. So we are into the main method, a dog class called the bark method. So now we're going to call it on. So this is our object spike, and we're calling bark. And the reason we can do that is because this is part of the class dog, and this is our method. Um, this is a really bad example, also, because we could actually just call bark. So we wouldn't even need to do spike.bark. This will actually work without it. But that won't be what they want. Yeah. Let's go ahead and go keep it going. So inside the in between bark and main methods, add a method called run to the dog class by typing public void run. So again, we're just creating a method here and don't skip ahead like I did. Void run. Run your code. Give it a, a parameter called int and name it feet run your code and then print out a uh, print statement for this 
And you'll notice that we're actually breaking our code up uh, instead of just doing it all in one method or in inside the main method. And the reason for that is just so so that you would literally the, we can recycle these when needed. And we don't have to every time for no matter we don't know how many dogs we're gonna end up creating. Dog objects we're gonna end up creating. So inside the main method, call the run. So go ahead and call uh, spike dot run. And now it's going to name um, pronoun feet. Oh, how many? How far do you run? Three. Your dog ran three feet. Congratulations. Your dog sucks at running <laughs> three feet. Um, then we could do some if statements to say, "Wow, your dog's really off while running. He ran a whole three feet. If it's less than ten feet, something like that." You know, uh, in between the run and main methods, we're now getting into getters and setters. Um, w typically, when you get a value, it's called a getter. And so, um, public void get age. And when you set a value, this is probably what we'll be doing next, you are then resetting that value. For instance, in dog's age, a setter would be used to say to change the dog's age from 5 to 6. So set that to 6. A getter would get the value. So if they were 6, it would tell you or it would retrieve it for whatever. Uh, maybe you need it for an if statement so you'd get the dogs. So if the dog's less than 6, get that value. Is it less than 6? Yes. Um, Tell me he's still a puppy. I don't know. So public void get age. Go ahead and run that. Uh, we want to return age. Um, oops. So with setters, you use void. When you are actually using... When you're returning a value, you have to give it the pr the type of value you're returning. It. In this case, we're returning an int. So uh, inside of the main set of int variable spike age. So we'll say int spike age is equal to in Milo spike. So we're saying we're setting a variable. And we are going to set it equal to the number of the age of the dog. And now we want to print that out. So we set the dog equal to 1, if you remember correctly. So system.out.println. And we're going to find out how old is Spike. And we could even spice it up a little bit. Hopefully this will work my dog spike is space one and uh, don't forget to put plus run it my dog spike is one uh, no creativity creativity is not awarded apparently um, let's go to run that there it goes so it just returns one pretty cool so those are getters when it returns something, it gets it. When it needs to reset the value to something, it sets it. Just remember to reset and set if you ever get it confused. Uh, note that there are now two files in the code editor. Within the dog class, use the extends keyword to inherit from the animals class. So in our animals ch class, they have a, a method called check status. So um, we want to inherit that. Um, I really wish they used the word... Um, Extends. So technically, dog extends from animal. I personally prefer the word inherit. I don't know why, but it's just more intuitive to me. So call check status method on spike. So uh, we're in our main method here to call it. We're going to say uh, spike dot check status, and it's going to work now because we now inherit everything that's from an animal. Um, to think on of it on a more simple level is maybe our main group is humans and then you're a girl or a boy or anything else for that matter and you you inherit from the human class so every human might have a heart and lungs and a brain and so on and so forth 
Um, inside the main method, create a new coffee object called my order. So we have our coffee. We're going to say, um, what are we? What is it that we're working with? What like variable? It's coffee. It's a class. Uh, we are going to call it my order, and we're going to set it equal to a new coffee. And in this case, it has no parameters. Cool. So on the next line, call the add sugar method on my order and specify its juice. So if we go to coffee, we're going to say uh, my order, and for our order dot add sugar. I'm going to add the sugar. And don't put that there because this is an object and not a method. I don't know why I put that there. Uh, add sugar, we need to put a parameter in. So yeah, we put in two cups of sugar, two sugar cubes. And now it says to modify the coffee class that then inherits from beverage. So it extends. See, even there we use inherits. That's why it should be called inherits. Extends beverage. Cool, and inside of the main called the is full method on my order. So we're going to say my order dot is full. And it's going to tell us. The order is full. Cool. So that was lessons completed, object oriented program. We got one left. Um, they're supposed to, this course is supposed to take four hours. We did this section in 16 minutes, 40 seconds, but I'm used to Java, so this is very um, elementary stuff for me. If there's anything that I kind of skipped over or you need a little bit more, I know classes are and, uh, maybe a little bit weird at first, um, and they're definitely diving into it much quicker than they did in the Python or PHP course. So I actually hope they expand upon this because uh, Java is a really cool language. It's also the first one I learned. But as always, questions, comments, constructive cri criticism is always welcome, and I apologize for the disruptions of today's video. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching the video. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe. That'd be great. And leave me a comment letting me know what you liked about the video and what you didn't like about the video. See you next time.